And welcome, function folks. Lesson 2.5 is on solving rational equa equations day one. That implies day one that uh, we'll be spending a couple of days on this. The three minute review isn't a three minute review, it's more like a 15 minute review, and hopefully, you've given it a, a, a go. Uh, the three questions that uh, we've got for the three minute review uh, some, uh, some is kind of new ideas and some others review, so I hope you tried it. And this uh, this video is taking it up. Um, this is a good thinking question. And the idea is, we've had one of these in uh, the polynomial functions as well. I give you some stuff and you have to come up with the equation. Well, how are we going to do this? I think the first thing is, is to somehow organize all this information. The way I, I would do that is on a sketch. So I'm going to draw a little sketch here. Why not? Uh, here's, oops, got my lines all not lines. There we go. And there's my x and y axis. And now let's get some some uh, of this information on there. Vertical asymptotes at 2 and negative 3. So there's 2 and negative 3. And as I'm doing this, I'm thinking, ah, okay, vertical asymptotes, what happens uh, in the equation? Because we want to state the equation. Um, also, a horizontal asymptote at y equals 5. All right. Kind of just getting our, ourselves organized, y equals 5. Uh, then what's all this business? f at x is greater than 0 for these values greater than zero for these values. So that means, you know, here is f at x being positive. So that means the graph for x going from negative infinity to, to negative three has got to be positive. Well, we've never seen anything be uh, sort of in this section here, right? And it's not going to cross. So, you know, how is this going to work? Well, we have a horizontal asymptote of y equals 5. It means the graph's going to have to be like this. It has to be, even though we don't have an equation to, to check out the, the behavior near the asymptote. Since f at x has got to be positive, um, it's got to be here. Between negative 1 and 1, it's going to be positive. Between negative 1, negative 1 and 1 aren't on this, this at all. Well, let's put them on. There's negative 1. There's positive 1. And it's got to be positive. How is this going to work? Well, it's going to do something like this, isn't it? All right, it's got to. What else could it do? Uh, and then from 2 to positive infinity, it's also uh, positive. Well, notice it's not going to be like this, because we know it's got to have a uh, horizontal asymptote of y equals 5. It's not going to be like this, because it's not negative in here. It's got to be up here. It's got to have a, a horizontal asymptote of y equals 5. And so that means... This is what the sketch must look like. Now, notice that this is even more challenging than that because we're asked to come up with an equation. All right, well, let's work backwards from the graph and see if we can figure out an equation. Well, what was the first thing? Uh, the first thing was the vertical asymptotes. That we are already thinking of the equation for vertical asymptotes. When vertical asymptotes occur when the bottom is zero. So I've got x minus 2 and x plus 3 on the bottom, that would give me those vertical asymptotes. Uh, a horizontal asymptote of 5 would mean that the top has 5 as a leading coefficient. The bottom part has 1 as a leading coefficient. I've heard multiple this, apply this out. But this has to be of degree 2. So this has to be some sort of quadratic. right? Well, the thing is, we don't know exactly what type of quadratic yet. We're working on it, right? Well, what does the other stuff give us? Where it's positive and negative. In fact, it gives us the x-intercepts. X-intercepts of negative 1 and positive 1 mean the top is 0 there. Right? So that means the top has to have a bracket of x plus 1 and x uh, minus 1, right? So, well, where does the 5 come from? Well, it's got to sort of hang out front because we still have to have a, a horizontal asymptote of y equals 5. 
x-intercepts at negative 1 and 1, vertical asymptotes at 2 and minus 3. All of this stuff is actually giving us the x-intercepts, even though we might not have known it. Um, Dandy, you should try one. And, and it might make sense for you to pause the video and actually try that one now while it's on your brain. You're welcome to just keep going and taking up three, uh, the three-minute the three minute review, which is more like a 15-minute review. Um, as well, but you might want to try that one right away. Number two, our, we're asked to sketch, and notice that we've kind of got a, a recipe built up. You know, we, we think of, let's do the X and Y intercepts, let's talk about vertical asymptotes, let's talk about horizontal asymptotes, and then maybe the behavior near the vertical asymptotes if we need it, right? And not all of these things are necessary, but uh, they give us a picture. And so um, the idea that I like to do is I like sort of, as I do a calculation, let's add that to our sketch. Okay, fine. X and Y intercepts. Oops. And I might need some more room here. X intercept. Uh, is when y is 0. y-intercept is when x is 0. Let's do that one first. Uh, notice it's easy. When x is 0, that's 0, that's 0, that's 0. Actually, this is going to be a, uh, a point there. The y-intercept is 0, so that kind of robs us of one of our nice points that we like to have. But then when the, the the x-intercepts are when y is 0, and sometimes, and what I can see, I'm going to have more than one here, so the uh, x-intercept is when y is equal to 0. So let's do that calculation. And again, as long as the bottom is not equal to 0, I can cross multiply. As long as the bottom is not equal to 0. And of course, that's part of my calculation for vertical asymptotes. That'll come up later. Um, but when it's not equal to 0, I can cross multiply, and then I've got a little polynomial equation in this case. What's nice is this actually factors and it's not that bad. And I get factors x minus 2 and x plus 1, numbers that multiply to get negative 2 and I had to get 1. And then I get my x-intercepts. That's the one I already knew. Right? I already knew that one. x equals 2 and x equals minus 1. So those are all x-intercepts. Uh, 2 and minus 1 and 0. Put those on there. There's 0. 2 is here. And negative 1 is there. And next is a vertical asymptote. i got to get rid of this. It's in the way. Oops, hang on. Need more room for calculations here. Okay, so check. Did that. Vertical asymptotes. Well, the vertical asymptotes occur when the bottom is equal to 0. Plus 2x equals 0. So when does that happen? Well, I'll factor it. x plus 3x minus 1. x equals minus 3. x equals 1. Our vertical asymptote. So at minus 3, I'm going to have a vertical asymptote. At x equals 1, I'm going to have a vertical asymptote. Uh, horizontal asymptote. So that's that check. And notice my picture's coming together. I still don't quite see what's going on here, but um, I'm getting there. Uh, what's next? Horizontal asymptote. Well, the horizontal asymptote, remember, we talk about the degree of the top and the bottom, and the, bo the bottom is one less than the top. Which case is that? Well, that means there's no horizontal asymptote, but there's an oblique asymptote, right? And again, look at this. This is still in the way. i got to get rid of you. I think I'll put you on a different page altogether. Let's do that. And yeah, put you over there for now. Okay, so horizontal, I'm going to use a different color so we know that this calculation is a little bit separate. No, but 
there's an oblique asymptote. You remember how to find the oblique asymptote. It's it's a bit of fun, remember. It's long division, right? So I divide the, the uh, bottom into the top. Uh, plus 2x minus 3 goes into 2x cubed minus 2x minus 4x plus placeholder. And then I get my oblique asymptote. Wait, hang on here. Got to move that part over. Oh, there we go. That looks better. And I get 2x cubed plus 4x squared minus 6x and subtract. And remember, when I'm doing this with a, with a quadratic, I'll have two parts like this, negative 6x squared uh, plus 2x. Bring down the 0 and minus 6 to finish it off. Minus 6x squared minus 12 plus 18. 12x plus 18 subtract. And I get a mess, but I don't really care about the uh, remainder here, do I? Not really. This is the important thing. The oblique asymptote is 2x minus 6. So I don't really have a scale on my on my uh, um, diagram yet, but at minus 6, up to right 1, up to right 1, up to right 1. i got to be careful here. Um, up to would be to minus 4. And over over one would be minus four and one. One and minus four up one and this is to, to do my oblique asymptote. Remember the oblique asymptote has slope of two and y intercept is minus six. And I'm just trying to figure out which side of this two it goes on, right? So now um up to right one, up to right one, that point, up to right one, and then there's my oblique asymptote. It's going to be something like that. All right, now, how can I put this together? Well, I've got my two points here, right there, one point, and I know it's got to get close to the oblique asymptote. Uh, how is this going to work? Well, if I'm not sure, remember, I can still do behavior near the asymptote. So let's try uh, the behavior as x goes to 1 from the right, just so I know whether it's up here or down here, because it's kind of hard to see. Well, f at x, and I'm going to put this in factored form, is the top is here in factored form. And I use factored form so I can do my pluses and minuses. Of course, you could use your calculator, but uh, that's a little bit slower, less fun. So what do I got? And this is, the, this is me thinking about this. When x is po this is 2x is positive, right, because it's in round 2. This is going to be negative because this is around 1, 1 minus, minus 2. And this one is going to be positive as well, right? 1 plus 1 is going to be positive. This is positive. This one's positive, right? This is around 4. And this is where I get my teeny, right? It's a little bit more than 1. So that means this is going to be a, a teeny positive, teeny positive. So altogether... Notice I've got an odd number of negatives, one negative, this whole thing is going to be negative. So that means that calculation right there shows me that f of x goes towards negative infinity. So on the right side of this vertical asymptote, it goes to negative infinity. So how is this going to work? Well, this kind of makes sense, actually, to going through this, this point and then getting close to the, horizontal, the uh, oblique asymptote going to look something like that. What would the next one look like? Well, we could do another calculation if we wanted to. Uh, another calculation. But notice what we got. We've got two zero. We've got zero there, zero there. 
I know that it's got to get close to my vertical asymptotes without crossing. It's going to do something like this. It can't. It's not going to go uh, this way. I guess it could go that way. Maybe we should check. This is a long three-minute review. Three-minute review. Um, but notice, I only need to do one calculation because there's no way for it to go through one and then down this way because it's got to go through this other point. It could go this way, right? Or it could go this way. But to get through both of those points, um, it's going to start high and end higher, start low and end low. But let's check it out. Uh, F at X is coming from close to 1 on the uh, on the left. This is positive. This one's positive. This one's negative still. This one's positive still. The top's all the same. The bottom's where the interesting stuff happens. Uh, when x is a little bit less than 1, this is positive. But this one, a little bit less than 1, this is going to be the teeny negative. And I've got an even number of negatives now, so this is going to be positive. Big positive, right? Even number, negative there, negative there. Uh, an even number of negatives gives you a positive answer. F at x goes towards positive infinity. And in fact, then I get here and here. It's going to go like this. And what happens on this spot over here, well, I could probably convince you, since it doesn't have any other y-intercept, that it's going to go this way. And again, I could, if I wanted to, check and see the behavior near the vertical asymptote x equals minus 3, but I'm pretty confident because there's no x-intercepts that that's what happens. Phew! What a good question. Okay, the next one, and that's this is kind of review of what we did yesterday. Some This was a pretty nasty one, but uh, the last one we'll see is actually a review of grade 9 stuff. I've got a, an equation and involves fraction fractions. How do I deal with this? I kill the fractions by multiplying by the common denominator. Multiply each thing by 12. Each thing by 12. Each thing by 12. And the idea is I get rid of the fractions. And when I actually multiply by 12 and kill the fractions here, I multiply not by 12 because once I kill the fraction, I multiply by 12 divided by 3, which is 4. Uh, and not actually multiplying by 12 here because 12 divided by 4 is 3. And then I have to remember to multiply each part by 12. So this is uh, negative 3 times 12. And I'll do that in the next step. And now I change the fraction equation into a normal, easy grade 9 linear equation. Multiply to remove the brackets. 4x plus 4 minus 9x equals negative 36. Collect the like terms. 4 goes on the other side. Do that all in one step. Uh, negative 40 and x equals 8. Divide by negative 5. x equals 8. And that a little bit easier than number 2. So I wonder where we're going here. Why are we talking about this? Well, that's where we'll pick up uh, part 2 after the 100-minute, 3-minute review, uh, solving rational equations.